Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Dumpster Diaries. I am Moses Wartooth and I'm here with Justin Allen. And we have news and stories and funny shit to talk about. So let's get started. We got some, uh, I mean, I think it's funny because I'm not there, but <laughs> Burning Man has flooded. The place that's held in a goddamn desert is currently experiencing flooding. So when you say flooding, how bad are we talking here? I mean, I'm talking like they got like two and a half or three inches of rain. But to a place that gets like two tenths of like two tenths of an inch every six months, that's even a couple of inches of water just floods them the fuck out. Oh, so really? all of their <clears throat> their desert has turned to mud. So like just people just literally stuck out there. Yeah, literally stuck in the mud. Like their vehicles are stuck, <laughs> and like there's a, there's like seventy thousand people out there right God now. God dang, dude! So, I didn't realize that many people went there. Yeah, man. I mean, it's the desert, and then they legitimately turn into a, a small. Well, I guess not really a small, but a, a fucking city. Yeah, dude. So, like, oh my god. I've, I mean, I, I I would like to go one day. It does sound pretty cool. Yeah, man. I think it'd be a cool experience. I mean, I've seen like pictures of it and stuff, and I mean, it looks yeah, it looks especially like a good time. yeah, like their final thing where they tip like. A bunch of art stuff, like all yeah. that stuff looks cool, but they they build something and then typically light the fucking dude on fire at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's a cool. statue of a dude on fire. Right? Yeah. Or, no, like, yeah. no, they light it on fire. Yeah, yeah, like it's a wooden statue of a man. Like, yes, they, yes. Don't, they don't light a man on oh. fire. You know, like sorry, man. We haven't said done that, that since biblical times. <laughs> Oh, that was last week. That was last well, I mean, they. What if they? I don't know. <laughs> Could be interesting, man. I've I just mean, heard doing enough drugs out there. People probably get lit on fire. Well, I listened to Duncan Trussell um, a lot, and he he goes to all those festivals, really and stuff like that, man. Um, and <clears throat> he was saying that like it's just like the weirdest shit you could imagine. He said when he went, there was literally something called the fisting tent. <laughs> God damn. Where the rule was like you had to be like you, any girl could go in there. But if a guy wanted to go in there, he had to bring like his girl with him, and then anybody could just fist anybody in there, even the dude. I, I guess I don't, I don't know. I, I, what what if what <laughs> if you went in there and you just got pushed to the ground and fisted? <laughs> dude, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, wait, I brought a woman. <laughs> yeah, dude. Said so there's like community bottles of lube and shit in there and stuff, but it's literally just like this tent that was set up. It just said fisting tent. Man, I was like Jesus <sighs> Christ. I mean, personally, I'd be a little bit worried about catching diseases and shit. Oh, no shit, man. You know them. You know them dirty, dirty hippies. Well, I mean, yeah, on top of... <laughs> first off, I don't like... However long they've been out there, man, they don't fucking shower. Yeah, dude, it's good. Like, it's totally. a goddamn desert. There's no water. I tell you, you get an infection one on one, dude. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, like Trussell was saying, you know, like they just do crazy shit. Like they'll like launch, pe- like they'll like launch pianos like into the air and shit. Like and just shoot them out in the desert and stuff. That's, like, like, that that should be cool. Catapults and stuff. Because I mean, it's like in the middle of like bowfuck Egypt. Like, yeah, there's yeah. Nothing around. I don't even think the cops even really go out there. Man. No, I don't think so. I mean. I feel like I think they're just like, all right, guys, keep it contained to this little area. And as long as not too many, like <laughs> one person's died this time. I mean, typically, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. But I mean, I think people die every time there. Yeah. Well, how they did was it drug overdose? They it has not been released. It's a drug overdose. Dude, they could have been, been drunk and passed out in two inches of mud and just drown. Yeah, you could like, probably drown in two inches of water, you think? Just face for down. sure, yeah. <laughs> Babies do it all the time. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's why on those buckets they have. Do not let a goddamn don't kid let a in kid there. crawl in there yeah. or whatever. Yeah, dude, we should go to Burning Man one year for sure. You know, I think it'd, it'd be, be a fun. good time. Oh yeah, we definitely have to get like an RV or something, dude. Yeah, yeah. My whole sitting in a tent days are fucking over. Well, dude, I'm not. That'd be hot as fuck. I don't want to do that shit in the desert. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I mean, it's like you look at how hot it is here right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good God, man. Like, even being outside for 10 minutes is fucking miserable. But I do kind of like the idea of, like, these hippies who, like, probably aren't too, like, mechanical savvy trying to figure out how to, like, tow vehicles and, like, oh. <laughs> get, like you know, like, get out yeah. of there and shit. Though. I can just imagine. They're like, <laughs> well, I got, like, uh, three tabs of acid. <laughs> just, like, uh, trying to trade up. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, does anybody have a spare tire? I like, got three maybe tabs. Maybe I can tie my pair of pants around this fucking fender well and rip that shit off. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> oh my God. I would be fucking livid if I was there, man. I'd be like, God damn it. it Ima- imagine the, like, the, like the average Joes who like took a weekend off from work to go out there <laughs> and they're just swimming. stranded out there now. Their boss is like, um, in three days, whenever you get here, 
you're getting a fucking drug test. Yeah, especially if it was like a type of job where they would not want to let their employer know where they were going. Like if you were a teacher? Yeah. <laughs> like work for the government or something. Yeah. He knows. Like, how the fuck am I going to explain this? You know at least one of those dudes in the military that's out there. That's what I was, I was just thinking that. At least one, dude. Yeah, they, they took didn't leave. Say shit. It was like, it's a long weekend. I'll come back on Tuesday. Everything will be cool. He's probably like, oh, fuck, I'm not going to get He, like, flew time. from Washington or some <laughs> shit, too. <laughs> dude, that would be so flight, terrifying, like, dude. You just have to make some shit up, dude. Like, I don't know. I would I, I'd figure something out, dude. I'd, I mean, they'd be like, you better start making up some fake documentation saying your mom died or some yeah, shit. You need to invest in Photoshop real fucking yeah. fast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Pop on Fiverr. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, Burning Man, it's once a year, right? Yeah. It's once a year. Yeah. I mean, it just looks like a cool fucking festival. It man. does. I was like, they got a, like I said, all the art, the art shit looks pretty fucking cool. Like yeah. they go out there and do just whatever the fuck. Yeah. I'm not big on drugs, but like, I don't know. I just like that scene. I think it's pretty cool. Man. Yeah. Cause I mean, like I went to like EDM festivals in Europe and stuff and they were cool. Oh yeah. Those were awesome. Yeah. I got, uh, the first one I went to was mystery land and it was like right outside of Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. Like you can imagine how crazy that was and like edm music at the time like was not my thing I, like i didn't even consider it to be real music i was like this isn't music <laughs> just, like i've been playing guitar for like 20 years you're so like, like what do you mean man you don't think just pushing a couple buttons on the computer is music <laughs> i'm gonna hit play you guys just do you just vibe do what you want to like, do i'm you know? gonna hit this button and then i'm gonna dance and you guys just do what i do or you see those videos where they're like adjusting all the mixers but they're not actually touching anything <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> <ghosting the> shit. <laughs> so, like you know it's always it's usually like some chick or something you know yeah. like some beta paris hilton dude. yeah she did she, that shit <laughs> did she really yes she oh was, a, she was a dj Oh my god, yeah, man. Um, but it was a, it was a cool festival. My friend talked me into it because he wanted to go with someone. He didn't want to go by himself. So mm-hmm. we like literally like took a tent. And we camped out on the campgrounds. I can't remember. I think it was like June or July. It was it was hot, dude. Yeah. Like I mean, it's like Western Europe. It's further up north, but like, dude, it was still. I think one day it was like over ninety degrees, and there's like no AC at all. Yeah. And but it was a good time, man. Like I, I went out there, and uh, which was interesting enough to find out was uh that that region like close to it, there's a place called Eidenhoven that's the number one producer of MDMA in the world. Oh that's why they have the festival there. Illicit MDMA. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's sold in a pure form. The one that I've like the one fucking festival that I want to go to that I haven't been to is called DEFCON. <laughs> yeah I've heard about it. It's, yeah. It's fun. like I watch their live shit every time but it looks fucking in, awesome. Is that in Brussels? Uh no I think I think it's in fucking I'm pretty sure it's in the Netherlands. Is it? I'm pretty okay. sure. Yeah, man, but it was a so I, like I was kind of like just dragging my ass like getting to that festival. I was like, man, I don't want to do like this is not my thing, dude. This is not not at all. And then once like the first night started, like I was like, oh, this is not about the music. It's yeah, about, dude, it's cool as shit. It's about like, the party. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I mean, it was cool, man, and like everyone was like super friendly and super cool. But I've never seen that many like illicit drugs just freely <laughs> just, just flowing. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because I mean, it's like in Holland, so like I mean, all drug end user quantities, all end user quantities are decriminalized. Yeah. So no one's gonna go to jail. You know, now if you're dealing, that's a different story. But yeah, yeah and dude. as long as you're not being a fucking asshole, like no one's gonna mess. Like the yeah. security is not gonna fuck with you, anyways. Yeah, man. But it was a, it, it was pure, and you're like, take a shot in the dark. How much they were selling it for? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Five euro a gram. Fuck. That's, that's cheap as six shit. American dollars, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, for a gram of. Highly pure <laughs> MDMA, a also known as ecstasy. So, if you're ever looking to take a vacation, <laughs> might be a place to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, man. You know, but like some of those young people are wild, dude. Like they're all like, I don't know, they just crazy as shit, dude. And I, I was like, damn, dude. Like, because it's like crazy. Like I go to college, right? Which I know, like now, like back in America, but like, you know, I think a lot of these young kids are like pretty reserved and stuff, man. Yeah. But like when I went to that festival, they were like. Dude, it was, it was the same insane. shit in England, only it was all highly illegal in England. But those people, I mean, they were still, cr- like, whenever you would go to the bathroom in the club, they didn't have doors in the stalls because they did not, like, if you went in there or the ones that did, like, like is, I would go into a bathroom. Yeah. I got profiled. <laughs> but, like, I would go to the bathroom, go to the stall to pee. Security guard would just push the door in on me and just look at me. I'd be like, dude, I'm literally dick in hand. Like, I don't have drugs. Oh, you thought you were, like using or some yeah. shit like that yeah and a yeah. buddy of mine don't you like, love it when people profile us oh yeah 
It's terrible. Especially, <laughs> especially anytime we have to like do shit together or whatever. Like, I yeah. don't know. People like will address, sometimes like, people will address us like we're two separate entities or whatever. Because <laughs> <laughs> like for those of you listening on audio, like Moses just has a shit ton of tattoos and I don't have a single one. And I wear like button down shirts. Yeah, he's and, like business casual and I'm like. <laughs> Street bum, I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> but we've like known each other for like twenty years. So like, yeah. you know, it's kind of funny, man. Get those reactions out of people or whatever. But one thing Especially man, around here because neither one of us fit in with the average person nah, here, which is not funny in itself. Like not at all. I get I get like looks, man. Like if I go to like certain places, um <laughs> College boy. <laughs> yeah, like, what you gonna learn today, college boy? <laughs> That is a throwback. You spaceship? <laughs> that is a callback to a previous episode of where, since I'm the first person in my family to go to college, everyone literally just makes fun of me all the time. Like, yeah, because how dare you try to better yourself, <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> like, college boy. One of my teachers actually asked the other day, he was like, he, he asked the class, he was like, how many of you in here are first generation like going to college? Mm. And nobody raised their hand. Except nobody? For, except for me. Yeah. Dude, that's surprising as shit. Uh-huh. Well, we, well, I, I yeah. guess, yeah, I guess we're, we're like, half a generation ahead yeah you know that that's what is, still surprising for me that, given this area but to be fair you go to a larger university yeah so i bet true. i bet at my fucking community college there's a lot of motherfuckers yeah. that are first timers i could see that yeah for sure man it's kind of like a lot of those kids i don't know their parents probably like really push for them to yeah do that or whatever you know but i don't know man kids uh kids today you know they're, they're more reserved they're hell of fucking smarter than we were like at those at those ages man. yeah like, they're well when it comes to like tech and like no and being able to figure out things and stuff well that's because they grew up with it yeah 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 for sure that's I mean, like they just like they understand that's like my that. dad i gotta help him operate a goddamn cell phone every time i go visit mm-hmm. him he's like had the same iphone 4 for 17 years and he's like i don't know how to fucking operate this yeah but like I mean, like a lot of kids that like took calculus in high school, or they took like college classes in high school, and, like, yeah. and that wasn't even offered like when we were in school, you know. And so I don't know. They're doing pretty good though, because that like reminds me like you you brought up that documentary or whatever um, about that jewel thief or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's what I was saying. Like young young people like don't like don't think that like a young just because someone's like in their like early 20s like they're not capable of doing some crazy shit dude yeah did you so finish the documentary i did it was okay a, i it just was, started it It was so amazing so the guy's name well he was a well, what's, he, what's, he was a guy but he was a child at the time but what's the name, name of the documentary? his name was gerald blanchard um is it just jewel thief right and that what it is i think it's what it is. i think it is i think it's just called the jewel thief and it's on hulu right yep and yeah. on the uh the picture of it is just this super pasty white fucking skinny nerdy kid with glasses but he's got like 17 cartons of marble reds and a pistol in his hand <laughs> just it's, like the most gangster dude, shit like just just the the initial just that <laughs> screenshot alone made me want to watch the fucking show yeah <laughs> but it's super interesting anyway so like the the short of it is he's he's adopted his dad didn't want him so he gets adopted into this other family and the one he's like we had it tough so he grew up He's like talking about how hard he was and what the streets and all this shit, but he grew up in rural Nebraska. Dude, have you so, been to fucking Nebraska? Yeah, like the entire state's he, a cornfield. The goddamn gangster of the cornfield or something. Like yeah. anyways, so that was that was laughable. But uh, he was in extremely intelligent. So at a young age, man, he had balls. Like he was stupid in one aspect because he literally he was obsessed with like documentation. So he filmed every fucking thing he did. Huh. So he would literally have people filming him and he would just go into gas stations and just walk out with shit. No but shit. he was super like he was super confident, overconfident almost. In some degrees he was, but other than that, but anyways, he would fucking he had this scam and he, they would rob Radio Shacks because it was in the day where Radio Shack was fucking king. Yeah. So they once pulled off a heist where they they cut out the cameras and they literally got a U-Haul and loaded up the entire fucking store. And how old is he when he's doing this <sighs> stuff? He's under like he's under fifteen. He's good, a child. Good, good God, man. Yeah. So, but then and then he figured out how to create fake receipts. So his thing was he would steal the merchandise and then go take it back to a different location with the receipt, and the store couldn't tell that it was fake, so they would just give him cash money back for their own items. And he would do that and do that. And he was racking up thousands and then hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he event- he bought a house at the age of 16. How how do you buy a house at 16? Dude, it was how- the fucking 80s, man. 
and, and his mom talks about that for my, his, da- my dad yeah, talks dude. about the 80s and shit he's yeah. like it's a different time dude no one dude, gave a get fuck. Away with anything. <laughs> they just were like you got the cash okay cool they're not gonna ask questions yeah, for but sure. the mom the whole time she was like i had no idea i was like bitch she was wearing fucking gold jewelry and i'm like you, knew. you liar you, like you knew whatever don't knew. don't deny that shit but anyway it's like he gets he's just gets more and more proficient at it and he starts robbing banks so but he's like genius fucking level like he'll stake out a new bank before it's actually done being built and he'll go and rob the atms before the bank is open really he would go drop in and he went like one bank for instance he ended up he got in like as they were doing construction on it and put like baby monitors in the wall and spackled over them and he had cameras inside of the bank to where he could just sit there sit there and monitor them (laughs) so then when it came time to it he somehow figured out how to open, like he could open up the backs of the ATMs from behind yeah. the bill, like from behind. So whenever the bank manager came in, everything looked just normal. But then whenever they walked around the back, everything was open and all the cash was gone out of the ATMs. Damn. But he was hitting them for like hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar licks every time, just on the ATMs. Woo, Jesus, man! Like, but and the, like, he was just blatant with it too. But another side note. That this shit was in Canada. Oh, Canada okay. yeah, is yeah. lax as fuck on their like. If it's non-violent crimes, yeah. it's just slaps on the wrist. Yeah, man. that like, shit. They don't do nothing. Fucking America. That's a different story, dude. They'd yeah, be sending like Seal Team away. Six and shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's like those. Um, what were those guys? The uh, the L.A. Was it the L.A. Bank heist or whatever? It was in the nineties, I believe. Right. Mm. The two dudes, remember. they robbed a Bank of America. I believe it was, I believe it was in Los Angeles. And they'd already robbed like a few banks or whatever before. And um, so they were like getting ballsy, ballsy. And so the final bank they go to, they literally walk in with full head to toe body armor. <laughs> like they have like, like bulletproof like shin covers and like even on like their feet and stuff. Like it's it was insane. Like they were full on tactical. They had like thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition like jesus christ multiple firearms like super high capacity like long range shit like i mean it was like insane stuff dude and they just went in there and they just robbed this bank of america and i can't remember i watched a documentary about it a while back and uh someone had called it in they were like hey we think this bank's getting robbed like it was like a like it was almost like a like a streak of luck they almost got away with this last robbery mm-hmm. And then they just like take off in the stolen car or whatever. Cause they would like steal multiple cars, like preposition them and like and ditch them as they like, yeah, going yeah. and stuff. And um, dude, they ended up in like the most craziest shootout with the cops. <laughs> I, I can't even remember how many people like died, but I think, I think only like a couple of cops got killed, but like a fuck ton of them got injured. Like they got shot and stuff. And, uh, did the two guys make it out or did they get killed? No, no, no. The first guy died like pretty quick. Oh, okay. I think he caught one to the head or some shit like that. And then the second guy, he was like shot up, but he was still like, <laughs> hey, dude, he fought to the end, dude. He fought and like, they were like shooting, trying to shoot out his engine block. But like the thing is like the cops didn't have the weapons to like, they probably just had that. pistols and shit, right? They like, just had pistols and like basic shotguns. Yeah. And so at one point they actually went like down the road from a bank. They went into a gun store and just seized all the rifles, oh, so they could go out there for like seven six two rounds. You're like and we stuff. need backup, yeah, dude. And like they they were like we have to get like higher capacity like weapons or whatever, you know, like larger rounds and shit yeah. like that to like get these guys. And uh, but yeah, dude, it, it was fucking insane. But because of that that instance is why like we have the police that we have today in America. Like with the extreme task force yes. type shit and yes. SWAT teams and all that kind of mm-hmm. crap. That's why it's like literally military grade shit. I mean, yeah. it's like a lot of it's retired military stuff. They just sell to like police departments or whatever. Thanks to George Bush senior who started that process. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, better yeah. go there than the fucking Mexican <clears throat> cartels. Obama. <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, I mean, get back to your story. So this young kid is like, just basically just going at it. Like, Balls Dude, to the yeah, balls, and the man. cops, the cops know, and then eventually it becomes a thing where like the cops wire his like phones and shit, and he knows, and he literally just talk like he's like, I know the cops are listening in, but he just doesn't give a fuck. He just keeps talking and doing the thing. Damn. But he gets away with it for so fucking long, and then eventually <laughs> he fucking meets a girl in Germany, and he like he well he does do a short stint in prison. Gets out and is like, oh, I'm on the straight and narrow. Moves yeah. overseas into Europe. Meets a girl in Germany. And then he's he's taking her on a date. And they're in Vienna. 
and yeah. he spots this diamond and he's like, hmm, I want this fucking diamond. I have to have it. Yeah. <laughs> so then like in some goddamn James Bond level shit. Like it was an intricate ice. Dude, like, it was insane. Like really? I won't go into like the details, just watch the shit. But like needless, he gets the fucking diamond and he replaces <laughs> it with the rec- replica Indiana Jones style. And they don't <laughs> like know he's got to take that shit yeah, off dude. real fast. And they don't know that it's gone for three weeks. It's so he's already Holy three shit. weeks ahead before they even realize that that's a fake fucking diamond in there. So damn, he dude. Hi- he gets that shit and he hides that away. So way later, he eventually gets caught up on some bullshit. There's doing like some credit crawl credit card scams and he gets fucked over by one of his partners and then he actually ends up working with a terrorist cell organization Dude, what, he, what the fuck he, do, he doesn't have anything to do with them but his boss is his boss is using that money to fund terrorist cells that and, reminds me of like in those, the middle east like drug trafficker stories you read about or whatever like eventually they get to a point where they have to start like doing deals with like directly with the taliban and yeah shit because ultimately like which isn't that weird it's crazy I like mean, i don't know i mean afghanistan i think they produce like 90 percent of the world's like opium yeah some shit like that like it's an insane amount is it but like they're like <laughs> they're like we wouldn't be making our money if they didn't have those goddamn terroristic fucking deals like i don't know i just wonder man i just know like, like when we they, first can't, invaded, they can't be happy with the money they got to use that money to try to do some other crazier shit know, right like you just just legalize it in afghanistan like an american like, like I don't know, or actually anybody besides those. Like, we would just take the fucking money and do stupid shit with it, but yeah. they take it and, like, want to build bombs and blow <laughs> shit up. Like, I don't know. But anyways... All right, so yeah, so, so back, to, back to this jewel yeah, thief, man. He eventually yeah. gets fucking caught, and he's facing, at this point, like, with all the charges and everything that they have on him, he's facing 160 years in prison. Good God. And they arrest 18 of his fucking associates. So he ran, like, a whole, like, operation. Yeah. Like, this was not just, like... And it wasn't anything. just... It wasn't just his organization, because they were also... They were... They knew about his boss, too. But he was just oh. all tied up in all of that shit. So, so did he have, like, a mentor in all this? Like No, he, he didn't. Was... He had nobody, man. Damn, dude. He just... He, he was just, just... figured it all out himself. Yeah. Damn. But... So he's facing that. He has, like, millions and millions of dollars that he's stolen... So they're inter- they're interrogating him, and he's like, "Look, let me cut a deal with you." And they're like, "Dude, fuck you! Like, you're not gonna get out of this." And he was like, "Do you want that diamond?" And they're like, "Yeah." So he still had the diamond. He still has the diamond. So and but at this if, well at this point they don't believe him. They're like, "No, you're fucking bullshitting with me, man." His lawyers are like, "Dude, if you don't have this diamond, you like you're fucked. Like because you're setting us up. Like this is bullshit. Like he's like, "Oh, I got it." So he takes them to his grandma's house and he's like, all right, hang on. <laughs> so he goes in grandma's house, fucking cuts a section out of the wall, digs out of some fucking insulation and there's the fucking diamond. Holy shit. And they're shit. like, holy shit, you weren't lying. <laughs> so for in exchange for that diamond, he gets a reduced sentence of eight years. And Damn. all of his associates get away scot-free. Total. No one got time. No, no one did. Except for him, he did his little eight years, Damn, but he actually dude. got out, and he got out in 2012. And it oh, did, shit. like, on the documentary, they're interviewing him the whole fucking time. He's just at a bar, and he's, like, a smug asshole. But, yeah, I mean, to be is fair... Is he, like, braggadocious kinda, about it? Yeah, I mean, he kind of earned it, I guess. Yeah. But, and at the end of it, it's just him... And he's like, yeah, I've been clean. And then he smiles and he's like driving away on a fucking yacht out in the middle of nowhere, dude. And, <laughs> I haven't been up to anything. Yeah. And all of, all, and because they're interrog- like they interviewing all of the police and the detectives and everybody that was involved with him and arrested him. And all of them were like, I know he's fucking doing something. They're like, we haven't found him yet, but I we're, like, we know he's not straight. <laughs> it, was, it was just, it was all around funny as fuck. Dude, he must have had a hell of an attorney, dude. I guess so. Or maybe Canada is just. Or they. That I mean, a lot easier to do with, you know. Italy just wanted their goddamn diamond back. Yeah, fuck, man. <laughs> I bet like doing a heist like that, there's probably no rush greater than that. Like maybe, no, like maybe that's the, what he was saying. Yeah, like I, I bet once you actually have that taste, like it's hard to like turn that shit off because yeah, because yeah. you want like people keep going back and keep doing this shit. It's like, dude, you made your money. Like you don't need to keep doing this. Why are you doing this shit? But I imagine that adrenaline rush and like that like feeling of release, like. Dude, it's probably. Do you think there's anything that is better than that? Like maybe I don't know. Like as far as like an intense feeling, maybe like killing somebody. You know, maybe. Like, I mean, different people are different. Like I'm sure. Holy like shit. I mean, I'm, I'm talking like knife in hand. You look them in the eyes. You watch the life leave their eyes. 
I don't know. I mean, if you asked a sex addict, they would say sex, or a drug oh, addict, they true. would probably say yeah. drug. Like, it, I think it would just depend on the person. But I think. Like, I think for me, it'd just be a big heist, dude. Yeah, that would be cool. Like some Ocean's Eleven shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Be like, oh fuck. Yeah, we got all this money. <laughs> but that was what got him because that's what gets all of the like they're smart as shit, but they just can't stop. And that that's what it, it's like an impulse at that point. They're like, yeah. I, they're like, I just get off to this. Nothing else compares. I have to do this. Like, otherwise, I don't like I don't care to live unless I'm doing this shit. You ever heard about the uh, the international jewel, jewel thieves known as the Pink Panthers? No, I believe they're Russian. Um, I'm pretty sure they're Russian, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no one knows exactly how many there are. Uh, there's definitely an organization of people mm-hmm. and they all come from like the same little like region in like the Eastern Bloc or whatever. And uh, so they all know each other. They all work together and yeah. stuff, but they've done like insane like heist and it's all based around jewels because I guess they have a system set up to where they can sell them and like off oh, or whatever. Okay. And uh, they're they're called the Pink Panthers, like the cartoon or whatever, mm-hmm. like all quiet, sneaking around and shit, yeah, like yeah. stealing shit and walking out. <laughs> thought it was da-da, a cool. <laughs> I thought it was a cool name. I was like, sweet. <laughs> I guess like one of their head guys, I, you know, he got busted. And he was like in prison, man. And some of his compadres or associates, whatever you want to call it, man, literally while the boss was in prison, having yard time, I guess, being outside or whatever these dudes had a fucking helicopter and they flew it over the prison and they landed in the yard and picked the dude up and God flew damn. him out. Yeah, and they've never found that dude. <laughs> and like all like these Grand Theft Auto shit. <laughs> yeah. And all these guys have like million dollar, like multi million dollar yachts and shit. I mean, it's like insane. Like this is not like, <laughs> like I think I think I saw the shit I saw. Like they were like looking at one guy's yacht and they were like, yeah, that's a twenty million dollar yacht. <laughs> and this dude literally has no proof of income. <laughs> You know, it's because they just self like, He hasn't filed a tax return in 35 <laughs> years. Dude, it's like Putin, man. Well, Putin, I think, uh, I can't I can't remember the exact figures, but I think he has like five mansions, like two helicopters, a shit ton of like sports cars and stuff like that. But his only income that he's had on paper is from his salary from being president of Russia. <laughs> and it's equivalent to $175,000 a year. <laughs> so like some people speculate that like the oligarchs give him gifts. Uh, like yeah, just keep him in his you know keep good graces and yeah. all that stuff and everything because he can just come in and just take their shit. I mean, really, like who, the, who like who's gonna who's even in a position to question him anyways? Yeah, like like <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, dude, there's a jewel thieves, man. That shit, I, dude. I bet that shit is like a there's there's not a drug that could compare to that, dude. <laughs> like holy shit, I bet it's like whenever you catch that glint of diamond in your hand. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I bet it's probably like. You think it, do you think well do you think it's difficult say you do the heist you make it out of like the vault whatever right then you got to wait you think that period of like waiting to like offload the jewels or whatever you think that's like super freaking stressful cuz it cuz that knock at the door well, it's not going to be a knock especially in America there's going to be a kick <laughs> they're going like, to kick that door in yeah. could happen at any moment like any hour of the day like i don't know man it like if i did it i would never hi- like i would never have it anywhere around me like yeah, like sure, oh, shit wouldn't be in my house, sure, like, dude. Yeah, which even that guy, like they kicked in his mom's door, they kicked in his door, like on multiple separate occasions. Like, yeah, one time he was hiding in a fucking crawl space because they fucking kicked in his mom's door, and they were like, <laughs> "No, he's fucking in here." <laughs> Holy shit, man! But yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, man. I would think, I, I think initially, if you could get it to a hiding spot, and as long as it was good and you knew that no one else fucking yeah. knew about it. You got to wait a long time. Yeah. Dude. Like, wait like 20 years and then come back. Yeah. Like, All right, give me that $2 million diamond or whatever the hell. You know? I don't know, like, bury that shit under a tree or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Be like, <laughs> come dig that shit out later, you know? But I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, that kind of, like, that story kind of reminds me. Did I, did I ever tell you about the book I read called Reefer Men? No. Reefer as in like smoking weed or whatever. Mm. Um, dude, it was like a wild, it was a wildest fucking, one of the wildest books I ever read in my life, dude. It talked about a cannabis ring, essentially, like a set, like mass importing and distribution and selling mm-hmm. uh, in the United States that spanned like over 50 years. Oh, God damn. Yeah, it essentially was a cartel. So like from the times of Reefer Madness... Yeah, on, well, like, yeah, basically, I, I'm trying to remember what year it started. It was like basically the summer of love. Lo- it was before that, so we'll say like the 60s, 50s. Yeah. It started somewhere around there, um, <clears throat> but definitely, definitely, weed was like not cool at all yeah, yeah. in America during this time, right? And like it started out with a couple of guys, and like one dude, he got out. Of, like a lot of them were all like former military, 
And there was like several that were like former cops and shit. So this is how they were able to get away with it for so long. And uh, like, I mean, it just starts out like just crazy. Like it's like a couple of friends, they get out of the military and like one dude was a Navy SEAL. Mm-hmm. And so he's like an expert swimmer or whatever, right? And they go down to, he takes a bunch of cash. He goes down to Mexico, right? And he buys, I think like 25 pounds of weed. Okay. And then he packs it all up, you know, watertight, ties a rope around it, ties a rope around him, puts on his flippers and his snorkels. And then that little Southern California, little like trench or whatever. Yeah. He swims across that. And his friends are waiting on the beach in California with like Gatorade and like peanut butter. I guess. Sandwiches or something. Yeah, yeah, because he's so exhausted by the time he gets there. But that that money funneled like funded them initially. Oh, okay. And then they started like cutting deals. Like they they found like movers and shakers in the states. And then next thing you know, they were doing like crazy, crazy, crazy shipments coming in. And they're recruiting more people, more and more people. I mean, mm-hmm. towards the end, this organization had like no shit like 200 like official members jesus it was like it was a fucking corporation like. yeah yeah dude they bought a um i think it was in the 90 it might have been the 80s i believe Ugh, dude it's been so long since i read this book but they bought like a like freight like shippy like ship like the ones that shipped this huge like train cargo containers uh-huh. they bought one of those god damn and they found out back in the day before we had you know everyone now the just, scanners and shit everyone calls it like well oh, yeah they, they 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 had a lot of that shit they were more like radio frequency and stuff. But one of their main guys was a former DEA agent that knew all that shit. Oh, okay. And so he was literally on the boat and he was like monitoring what like the Coast Guard and the DEA were like all talking about and yeah. shit like that. And uh, it's kind of a funny story how all this comes crumbling down in the end. Like it's the littlest mistake, dude. And it fucks everything <laughs> up, dude. <laughs> but so this is before they had like Sensimilia, right? Like we call it Kush now. Like mm. you know, higher quality shit, no seeds, right? Well, in Thailand, they had a thing called Thai Sticks. And essentially, it was Sensimilia, right? But nowhere else in the world was making it at the time. So they were like, well, fuck, let's go over there. So they had made multiple trips before, like, flying. They cut deals with, like, villagers and shit like that. They bring this big-ass boat over there. (laughs) And they load that shit with 80 tons of fucking weed, dude. That is a lot. A ton is 2,000 pounds. (laughs) 160,000 pounds of weed. And they tried, like... And they, I mean, they, they had this boat for a while, but they do all kinds of other shit. Like at one point they were paying off like uh, helicopter pilots in the army, like off the coast of California. They would come out to like their boats. They would like, while they're doing training missions, they would just make a little, <laughs> they make a pit stop and then they would lower a rope and they attach to the cargo nets, like bound with like hundreds of pounds of weed. And then these dudes would fly like out in the redwoods or whatever and, and just, just cut, cut the rope. Yeah. <laughs> and get, get paid off. And they were paying them like back in like the eighties, they were paying them like 10 G's of flight and shit doing that stuff. So those pilots were getting fucking paid. Hell dude. yeah. And, um, so yeah man they had this whole like operation or whatever and this one dude so how it came crashing down and this is kind of stupid they had a code to talk and it was a very lengthy process but they all the main guys had the same dictionary like a pocket dictionary so they knew like they had numbers for like a page number the line and then like you know so you can oh, like, spell so they it would out say that and then they would have to look it up to yeah so they would have like quick it. ones for like run yeah or yeah. something like that or hide or whatever the heck it may be or whatever they're coming <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and so like they so they had the codes memorized for like short sentences already mm-hmm. or whatever but like so it was hard so like even like when they were being watched by the dea and stuff like they couldn't crack this because they were like what are these what are these guys talking about it's just random ass numbers or whatever yeah. And uh, anyway, so like one of the main guys, he goes to like a Denny's or some shit, dude. It's like a cafe, a Waffle House. And he has everything, no codes. He just has everything about this entire massive global operation in a 70 page little green spiral notebook. And he's flirting with a waitress and all this other stuff. And he has a good day, smokes a cigarette, drinks his coffee, leaves, leaves his notebook (laughs) on the fucking table, dude. The waitress picks it up, opens it, goes, what the fuck? tells like her friend who's a cop he comes in God. that's how they pick it up dude so then now like this shit starts unfolding like quick yeah and so <laughs> and so like um one guy uh his name i actually remember his name his name is chris schaefer so there was the two schaefer brothers and they were like basically the main guys for the most part mm-hmm. uh they're like in the top like five guys and uh so one brother just like gets immediately arrest- arrested they're both they were both green berets too <laughs> so like they they like they were like solid dudes and uh so chris schaefer like ends up like living like this crazy life like he gets married to i can't remember she was like she was like a foreign foreigner like what, i think she was like filipino or thai or whatever has kids while he's on the run like has a family <laughs> has bought 
under like various aliases and identities and shit mm. has bought, I mean, this dude's worth like, he has like hundreds of millions of dollars. He has bought like multiple identities and he's bought multiple properties all over the world and they're constantly just moving around. His kids go to like private schools where he just pays cash. They all have fake names and all this other shit. And uh, so anyway, like Interpol's looking for this dude for years. They're just, like, trying to find him, man. And, uh, and he's like playing a low key, man. And uh, some cop, it was actually from Scotland Yard. It was like a young cop or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, kind of like, on like some like, just, he just thought it was like kind of like a bullshit assignment or whatever. But he was shopping somewhere, I think like in London or some shit. He was shopping and he went into a antique store and he recognized him. Oh, fuck. From like a mug shot or whatever he had yeah. from years ago. And he was like, this is the guy. And so he starts going into the store frequently and he's like, trying to get like a feel of this dude like okay is like, that guy like it works there or he's just in there all the time yeah he, he owned it oh okay, okay. He, like he, he's still doing just random shit okay. so he opened like an antique i guess to stay busy i don't fucking <laughs> yeah. know but <laughs> like because i'm sure just hiding out like in a mansion somewhere gets old after a while i guess that's still like a try it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i do that for a few years yeah. you know <laughs> but uh so anyway one day chris schaefer one of these main guys in this drug ring He's walking down the street and this cop literally calls him by name. He yells Chris Schaefer and the dude turns around <laughs> and he's like, fuck. And so they, they get his ass. They snatch him up or whatever. And uh, so the dude was like really cool or whatever. And, it, it, and you know, he basically just cooperated, was like, here's all my shit. And like the guy, he was very like honest. He was like, I can't remember. I think he was on the run for like 10 years. And he was like, I'm fucking tired. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he's like, let's just go to jail and get this he's shit like, over with. At least with. I can get some fucking yeah. rest. He gave him like a bunch of money and shit. They left his family alone and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, but he was just like, I'm done with this shit, dude. Like, I'm out of this. But um, one of the other main guys, and the guy was, like I said, like in the top five, uh, he, they didn't catch him till right at the end. And they, they thought for the longest time, they, they didn't even believe it was him. So he was a Hispanic. Well, he's American, but like you know, Hispanic uh, ethnicity, mm-hmm. and owned like a small construction company, like down in the south. Lived in a really like lower middle class neighborhood. Had a house that was cheap. Still had a mortgage. So he was like millionaire next door status. Like. Yes, <laughs> and so they 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 monitored this guy forever. This dude never spoke on the phone. Never did any of this. Like, never bought stupid shit. Never, never. And then finally, they were able to, like, cooperating witnesses and stuff, they were able to, like, get a warrant on this guy, and they went mm-hmm. in this dude's attic, and I, I can't remember how much they found. I Don't quote me, but I think it was, it was like, four or $500 million in, in his attic, just sitting there, like, just bricked up. And, it, like, it was just like, what the fuck? Like, you dude. know? And he was, like, the, he was, like, one of the main kingpins for what could arguably, arguably be the first cannabis cartel in America. That's crazy. Yeah. <sighs> It's wild. There's more. There's way more to that story. I dude. can't believe like it's a, it's called Reefer, man. It's a good book, man. I'm fucking tied up on why the fuck. <laughs> why would you keep that money in your attic, man? <laughs> I, it's I, a dangerous ass spot, <laughs> dude. I don't know, man. I, he just probably just didn't know what the fuck to do with it, man. Honestly, I would have dug a hole under the bed or something. Yeah, and, like, put that shit in the ground for sure, dude. I'm doing some Breaking Bad shit, man. Yeah, I'm some GPS coordinates and driving in the desert. And we're digging a six foot hole. And yeah. we're dumping barrels, dude. We'll come back in a couple of years and get this shit out of here. I'd be like. <laughs> worried about a goddamn <laughs> fire every day of my life <laughs> yeah but that, that, that that story was like crazy man um and uh like i remember reading in the book these guys like they had their own like radio system essentially like on their own frequencies so, oh okay so one guy like, was like uh, what's that shit called is is it a cb radio cb radio yeah. yeah and uh he was literally driving and listening to like he could talk to his friends and then he could switch and like listen to like the DEA and like the law enforcement. Mm-hmm. And his friends like gave him a heads up, like, hey man, like you are on their radar, like yeah. bad. And so he flips over to their channel or whatever, and all he can hear is like a description of him and his vehicle. Oh shit. And like they're as he's currently driving. Yes. <laughs> and they're actively talking, like, oh, he he, he just passed this street. He's on the corner of this, oh. this, and this. And he's just like, fuck. And they're like, I think he like parked in a parking garage and just took off, like tried to get out. Gotta they, do something. They, they got his ass. <laughs> you know, dude. God, imagine how terrifying that would be. You just dude, like, oh, yeah, like your entire like your life will be flashing before your eyes. Like you, <laughs> it's you, over. Like every goddamn mistake you ever made, where you'd be like, "Fuck, <laughs> yeah, dude." <laughs> I, I just start by I'm white Bronco, dude. I'm booking it to fucking Mexico with that OJ Simpson <laughs> shit. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> fucking helicopters following them and stuff. 
damn dude fuck rem- dude remember got rem- <laughs> dude that made me think of remember south park when butters he was in his go-go action bronco or no it was cartman and he was trying to make it to mexico and he was in the little power wheels thing and he had like a 45 car pileup and shit behind him i don't remember that one, i don't man. remember why but i just remember he was cartman was in his little he was in his go-go action bronco and it was one of those little battery powered fucking cars i watched the i watched the episode the other day man uh speaking of like you know rex on south park and everything um I watched the episode the other day where he wanted to become a NASCAR driver, but he wasn't he wasn't poor or stupid enough. <laughs> so he gives all his money to Butters, and then he just starts chugging badges because Badges yeah. apparently it could like fuck with your memory or whatever. And he's just like super red. I think he's like dipping and shit. He at is, one yeah. Point. And he's like, I'm gonna turn left. <laughs> so I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna turn to the left. Turn to the left. <laughs> I could never get into NASCAR, dude. Like at all, like. No, yeah. I like playing the video games because I would just go the opposite direction of the track and just crash. <laughs> yeah, as far as like watching the real shit on TV, I don't know. again, the only part that I would find entertaining would be when they crashed. Yeah, well, uh, a guy I used to work with, he was super big into it, man. Like, really? really? Yeah, yeah, would like take a camper and tailgate and all that shit and do all that. And he was like, man, he was like, he, he was telling me that he thought it was just the dumbest shit for the longest time. And then he went to one and he said it was crazy because you feel like the power of those cars when they go by. Like they're so loud and like you can like literally feel like they're yeah. up close. You can feel the ground like rumbling underneath you. He was like, that's cool. But he was like, more importantly, it's just like the EDM festivals. It's the party. You know, he said, go to a NASCAR race. Go to like the tailgates before. And it's just insane, dude. Okay, so actually... From that description, a NASCAR event and EDM festival are exactly the same. <laughs> because instead of the cars, you just hear the, your fucking rib cage is getting rattled by the bass of the speakers. I'm just thinking of like a literally like an EDM like artist performing in that like At center NASCAR. circle, like in that circle that they drive around or whatever, yeah, like the yeah. pit stops or whatever. Like fucking just... bass nectar or somebody <laughs> in there. Yeah, dude. That would that would actually be cool as shit. Yeah, that'd probably, I'd probably go to that. I would, yeah, that would be like, like hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be like <laughs> EDM and NASCAR, just high on drugs, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking sniffing glue and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't get into it, man. But like, but I'll I'll do this shit like sometimes, like like when I go to like if I ever stop into like a dive bar or something like that, right? You know how they're like, especially like sports bar, they're always playing sports. Yeah, yeah. But if you go there, like, not, like, on, like, a sports night, like a Friday night, Saturday night, whatever, Sunday night football, whatever, um, especially if you go, like, during the week, it's always, like, it'll be, like, women's tennis. (laughs) (laughs) You know? So, like, you'll catch me sometimes, like, staring at, like, this TV, like, I'm really into, like, fucking NASCAR replays or, like, women's (laughs) tennis or, like, golf or some shit. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing else to watch or whatever. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on right now. I did watch, though, the last time I went, this is kind of crazy. I guess, I don't know. There's, you know, I mean, there's tennis going on all the time. But freaking, uh, I didn't realize how fast those balls travel, dude. When they serve that shit. Oh, yeah. Dude, they were, like, recording it, like, or, like, measuring it or whatever. And, like, one dude was serving, like, 127 miles an hour. God damn. Because <clears throat> it looks slow on the TV. Yeah. I think it's because it's, like, I guess it's like the distance. F- true. Yeah. You know, but, yeah, dude, it's a 120. That dude was slinging it at 127 miles an hour. I was like, that would hurt, like, a motherfucker if that thing hit you, dude. That would yeah. be funny to see too. It would be. Just catch it in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit never happens, but I guess at that level they're good as fuck, so that's it's not gonna happen, but Oh yeah, for sure, man. But it would be funny if they got fucking bean in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're not into sports at all, are you? No, I don't yeah. give a shit about any of that stuff. I do kinda like basketball, I'll be honest with you. I do enjoy like that fast pace or whatever. <clears throat> I know we were talking about getting or I, I was talking about getting us like courtside seats to like some major game i mean that would be funny so we could wear like dumpster diary t-shirts yeah just just to promote our own shit like (laughs) we just gotta dress like ridiculous as hell like totally like out of character you know yeah like sports jersey flat bill hat a lot of jewelry probably a grill or two you know yeah sunglasses we're definitely wearing sunglasses we'll have to wear those stupid ass fucking red boots that look like smurf shoes like those goddamn things get some timberlands yeah yeah that's that, that. That's when you know you made it. <laughs> <laughs> Rocking fucking Timberlands. <laughs> it'd be cool. It, it'd be funny because you know our shit would be all over net blast all over national television. Yeah, that 
That's what would be funny about it. You know, it's like it's literally like ESPN like advertising our shit for free. Well, basically, yeah, you know, other than paying for the tickets. But yeah, man. And it'd be cool if like <clears throat> we just so happened to be there, like whenever Lil Wayne or somebody was there too, and we sit by him, sit like, next to him. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, there's Drake, there's Lil Wayne, yeah. Mark Cuban, you know. They probably just all wonder who the hell we are. I'm, yeah, yeah, you would, yeah. <laughs> they're like, who the fuck are these guys? You know what I mean? Because they're probably all used to like the same people paying mm-hmm. for this. Because I know like early in the season, like, I mean, they're expensive, but they're not like crazy like, bad. Ridiculous. Like, yeah. Like when you start getting close, like champ- that's like championships or like, oh, yeah, yeah. All that, like finals. Yeah, man. Like you're, you're, well, getting like, into, like even like thing. Super like Super Bowl tickets are expensive as balls. Mm-hmm. I'd kind of like to, I don't know, roll the dice and get some like shit like early on or whatever. And then maybe our team gets lucky and, That'd be kind of true. Cool. Yeah. Like get like some Mavericks tickets or some shit like that. Like day one, as soon as you can buy them or whatever, just get it and for just like, get it for a later date. Like if the they end. were to actually like yeah, make yeah. it to like the championship, <laughs> like and be there. And then we just go sit, like have these ridiculously <laughs> expensive seats <laughs> advertising our shit. Dude, I'd probably, honestly, I'd probably bring a sign in there at one point, you know, like as soon as something like crazy happens in front like of us. Have, like have, have a legit one with some like with a sports player's name on there, but on the back of it have dumpster diaries <laughs> and then we we'll see the camera pan just pan, like flip it. <laughs> that kind of reminds me, have you, uh, have you seen that beef between Tom Segura and um, freaking Garth Brooks? Oh, no. I think <laughs> it I've heard so like funny. a little bit of shit about it, but like what's the deal with that? All right, man. So you know Garth Brooks, right? Like, yeah. Famous country singer i guess you want to call him super country. famous country yeah. singer yeah i think he's like one of the most wealthiest ones he is, man. yeah and uh anyway he has that song like you know i got friends in low mm-hmm. places all right that will play into what i'm talking about here in a second but anyway so tom segura like obviously super famous comedian like us just make well we're not super famous but he just makes fun of, he makes fun of everything like us yeah. you know like if you watch our reels folks like you'll see it like it's just the most ridiculous shit that you can imagine but uh so he was somebody brought it up to tom segura that there's all these missing people right that correspond with garth brooks tour like miss like missing persons yes like, like every city he stopped in like for like a pretty like significant amount of time like there's a missing person <laughs> right <laughs> that's weird so, so tom segura is just asking the question like hey man like where's the bodies garth like i want to know i want to know like what's going on what's the correlation where are those people yeah <laughs> and so like he just keeps getting like garth brooks apparently is like super salty about it getting like pissed off right and segura has just doubled down like so like on their merch store like now they're selling like shirts that like one of them is like a picture of like a grave and it just says, I have friends in low places. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's awesome. I think another one says, like, where's the bodies, guard? <laughs> and so, like, and somehow, like, I was listening to Segura talk about it. Somehow, he knows somebody who knows Garth. Like, he's in, like, in that circle. In that social circle. And he was like, yeah, dude. He was like, Garth is very aware of it and is, like, super pissed off. Right? And uh, so now, because Garth Brooks has gotten pissed off, people have started trolling Garth Brooks. And so it's all blown up on social media, getting all over his shit or whatever. But there's like a video. It is so freaking funny. Like Garth Brooks is performing mm-hmm. and they have the camera, and, you know, they got the big projectors and they're, you know, they're, they're painting the crowd, showing yeah, people's yeah. faces and you can see it on the big screen and all that stuff. Right. And, you know, people are holding signs like we love you, Garth, like all this other shit. Well, they see one dude, right, who has a sign and the camera is like on this guy, like full fledged. This dude's taking up this huge like jumbotron like screen and it just says, where's the bodies guard? <laughs> and as soon as you it, that camera hits that dude and it and he looks into it, and you have enough time to read it. That camera backs out quick. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, they get zoom out, out. Yeah, they get out of there like real <laughs> fast, dude. So like people are like now just like fucking with him at his own concerts and shit. Like, That's fucking funny. I think it'd be but funny if we got tickets and we did that. He brought that shit on himself, man. Yeah. It, like people don't learn whenever if you it's just like whenever you're getting bullied at school like sure. you don't if the more you fight it the worse it gets yeah but if you if you fucking accept that shit or own it or just be like i don't like yeah i fucking killed the, I mean, probably, probably shouldn't say that oh that <laughs> yeah i killed those 75 like, people yeah, you'll never find the bodies at all you motherfucker but <laughs> yeah like just 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 don't let don't take it so personal well apparently segura like i was listening to the shit he was saying that uh he had offered garth brooks to come on his like super famous podcast because i mean i would oh, like defend himself in a way like you yeah, just talk just about it just be like hey and he was like basically he was just saying like if you would come on my show we can talk like, about this and, and then this out. people would like quit fucking with you as much yeah, about yeah. it you know what i mean but because he's like super sensitive about it 
then now people i, I mean people that doesn't that doesn't look good on him either i know like, dude if you're like what do you what do you got to hide <laughs> and i just think like if that was us man if someone did some shit like that to us like we would just laugh about it i mean whenever people people do talk shit to us on the internet all oh, the time yeah. like the youtube comments are great that shit's funny <laughs> i don't care go for it turns it out helps the algorithm actually keep on talking shit <laughs> it turns out about half the people out there don't understand what satire is yeah half the people out half of you guys are dumb as fuck <laughs> The other half, you guys are cool as shit, but uh, the other people just do not fucking get it. It's probably just the ones that subscribe to us that get it. They're like, fuck yeah, you know? I, I hope so. I don't know. I don't know. Some of those reels we made, like, they really genuinely make me laugh, dude. And we have, like, some super funny ones, like, coming out, too. But man. the ones that, I don't know, man, like, if people can't get it for what it is, then I don't know what to tell you. But at the same time, yeah. just keep commenting. It helps the fucking <laughs> algorithm. And it helps other people that want to see it, see it. So just, so just keep, we, keep talking shit. I don't care. So we can get paid? <laughs> yeah. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. What do you mean Elvis was not a Spanish-American war vet? <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe somebody actually thought that was like a real thing. Like, they were trying to correct us. They were like, that's not true. Like, or whatever. Or like clearly it's not true like what was the spanish american war was in what the, it was in the late 1800s dude yeah and then but in the same sentence he also fucking challenged mike tyson to an offshore bare knuckle boxing match so and no one questioned that part though which was funny they taught they were like he wasn't in the spanish american war but everything else checks out oh my god <laughs> I don't know, man. Making those reels are pretty funny, though. Like, they're pre- it's fun to do that shit, man. I, it I is do entertaining. Really enjoy it. That's a that's a good way to kill a few hours, man. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, what else you want to talk about, man? Oh, dude, isn't let's, a- let's talk about Elon. Yeah, or Elon's daughter or one of them. Well, I, I guess he- she's not a daughter anymore. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. No, I know we know we did mention this, man. Uh, she's a because he's got I think like ten kids, right? I I think so. Yeah. I, Right, as of now. And this is his <laughs> oldest daughter, right? Um, I'm not sure. Well, she's an adult. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, yeah she's okay, an adult. Okay. College age. She's in the college. <laughs> <laughs> so when she uh she's like kind of got off the rafters a little bit. Well, he's he's saying that she's been brainwashed by the school that she has been going to, the private school. It's in L.A. And uh, off the top of my head, I know Jack Black went there, but there's some other high level celebrities that have gone there as well yeah because all the celebrities they usually keep their kids like the same schools yeah. and stuff man yeah but so like what's she what's she uh doing that's so controversial well basically she was quoted as well she i don't know elon is basically just calling her a communist at this point because <laughs> she's just like anti-establishment because like, she like hates him right yeah like, she refuses to have at this point she's hasn't she ref, is refusing to have anything to do with him yeah because she's changed her name right and then I believe she's changed or attempting to change her gender yeah she's transgender or like non-binary she's it's something so like that is she, so is it is, is it he now it might be they them so it was but she was original or she was originally a female yes okay for sure so then now whatever it's gonna choose to be she's going straight ellen page on everyone i guess that chick from the juno movie what does she do uh she was a, uh, i remember the a movie horrible but. actress <laughs> but uh so you remember the girl in there that got pregnant yeah yeah well she transitioned to a man yeah yeah okay like full on yeah it was like I don't know, like her career like went to shit and she was like super irrelevant or whatever. And then so she got pissed. Then she like hopped on like the transitioning bandwagon and then she was like, oh, I'm a guy now. And then all of a sudden now she's back in the news. <laughs> you know? I think some of those people do that shit just for the attention and money, dude. For, I really for do. For sure, man. For I sure. really do. Just man. to keep themselves in the fucking mainstream. Yep. Yeah. But the funniest fucking quote out of all of that shit was Musk. And he literally just, he was quoted it like whenever he was asked about how he feels about it. He just said, can't win them all. <laughs> That's his exact words, yeah. too. Can't win them all. <laughs> Holy shit, man. I mean, what else, I mean, what are you going to fucking do otherwise? Like, he said his, if she's disowning him, he's like, well, I got nine other kids, whatever. Fuck you. I imagine, like, I don't know, if you got ten kids, I mean, I, I would say, like, at least statistically, one of them's got to be a little fucking off. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is very true. <laughs> 
I don't know. Do you think he actually raises his own kids? Like, obviously, like, he has some presence in their life. But... Are, th- are they all his blood kids? Yes. Okay, yes. so are they all, are they with different, like, all different women? So he's been same? married, Cause uh, he, I think he's been married that, twice. That chick's name Grimes or something like that? Yes, I believe. Um, I know he's been married twice, but I don't think he's married anymore. If I remember right. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not married now. And yeah, because like basically like his work just like ruined his marriages because he was like never around because he would just like be at the office for like yeah. five days straight, I mean, you know? Un- yeah, understandable. Because he's like basically Tony Stark, like trying to run the world or whatever. Yeah. And um, but I know now he uses surrogates. Okay. Like sperm implanted into a woman, contract, all that stuff. You're so going to give birth to my child. Uh, I think like officially that's what they're saying. Hmm. I think my man throwing down. Off the record, he's like, I need to test this shit out or we ain't doing this. He's like, what's in it for me? But apparently he's got he's got chicks that are like super into it or like, yeah, like let's do this. Well, fuck yeah, dude. I mean, I'm sure they're set for a lot. I mean, I'm sure at part I'm, of the agreement is even, a, well, even a regular surrogate, they get paid a relatively large sum depending yeah. on the area. Like, I don't know. A, even on a low end shit, I've heard like twenty to thirty thousand dollars just I've always for heard, a regular person. I've always heard thirty. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm sure like it could probably you could probably get it up there, especially if you had like really good genetics. Yeah, especially I mean Elon Musk. I'm pretty sure he's vetting those women. Oh yeah, good. I mean like dude, they're probably getting IQ tests and shit. Probably before, yeah, you know, like honestly, because I know like isn't like sperm banks like don't they pay you more like if you're taller more attractive have well, a college education? Yeah, they, they actually IQ. they won't even they won't they just straight up won't even accept. People, like certain people yeah so damn i think damn. the um like the ideal is like of a certain height you have you do have to you have to be you have to have a certain level of higher education and i think it was like they prefer like italians or some shit like really yeah it was that was like that, that's kind of surprising to me but i think that was that was what i'd read huh but which kind of seems weird to me because i would think a woman would have her own fucking preference but yeah whatever i guess like, it's just the majority i don't know i don't know yeah i wonder how much they pay for that shit though dude what do you think 100 bucks a shot oh are you talking about like if i was a dude and went off to jerk off in there how much would i get paid yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know i imagine it's got to be like at least a decent little chunk of change i right? would think so like got to be more than maybe like more than donating plasma <laughs> yeah dude did you ever hear about that uh it was, it was a netflix documentary but um i can't even remember the name of there was a doctor that worked at one of those fertility clinics, right? Where he was just like basically like implanting, you know, women or whatever, like knocking them up or whatnot. But I don't know what, the, what do you want to call it? Like impregnating, ins- ins- insemination. Oh, artificial insemination. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, he was using. He started using his own sperm, and he had like hundreds of kids, Jeez. and it was all in this small town. And people found out they were like married to their sister. Like God, they, it was, damn, dude, dude. It's I watched it. It is a dark dark fucking documentary dude and how it all came out no one knew shit he had it totally under wraps no one knew shit until that 23 and me that's what i was gonna say they started out. doing dna because they started picking up they were like whoa, whoa, whoa like i have a half brother that lives five like, minutes five away, minutes like. away like what's going on yeah and it just wrecked all these families and like so there was all these parents who like like they all were these, actually like victims of incest at that point yeah and oh. there was like all these fathers like that's like that's not my child or whatever you know what i mean like, oh yeah, yeah 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 dude it was like a whole fucking thing dude dude and I th- i'm pretty sure they uh, I, I think they buried that dude in fucking prison man they would have had to man they would have to i, I can't w- remember if he died or i wonder what the what would, i wonder what the charges like i wonder what that dude, would be called i don't even know man i can't it's been a long time since i watched it man but i just remember being it it was a fucking crazy story dude that is fucking crazy that'd be so terrifying <laughs> yeah. like find out the girl you've been banging for the last three years is your like half sister or some shit like that and then imagine if you had raised the kid for 17 years and found out that it wasn't even yours and you dude. you don't have any fucking children dude i would be fucking pissed oh i dude that's like a i dude that that's how people commit crimes of passion <laughs> yeah <laughs> shit like yeah. that i mean really like a dude finds out like you know right there at the end you know end of the road like hey that kid's not yours like what the fuck man well shit not like not even even day one dude that's a like if you if your yeah. wife gave birth to a kid and then right then she was like oh that ain't yours yeah dude like i, I mean i don't i don't care about how like stable the relationship is man i tell everyone like if you're gonna have a kid like you need to get a paternity test like, absolutely i'm that's i mean that's what i'm doing 100 yeah, percent. and they're not expensive no 
like there's like a, it's almost like a drive through clinic in town that we have. Dude, that, if that it's we'll like it, 20 man. bucks for my peace of mind, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, you, know, you gotta just pluck the kid's hair. Like, kind of doesn't yeah. doesn't hurt anybody. Nobody has to know. Maybe you get a drop of blood or something. Yeah, you know? be like then, right. then you can go to sleep easy. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> just don't don't tell your mom we were here. <laughs>